here. And that lets you save the look here. True form life. Green look on the <laughs> Welcome to Exploring Mind and Body with Drew Tadia. Drew is an expert in nutrition, fitness, lifestyle, and more. And he wants to help you live a healthier, longer, and more active life. Now here's your host, Drew Tadia. All right, welcome to another edition of Nationally Syndicated Exploring Mind and Body. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for tuning in and being a part of our True Form Life community, whether you're listening as a podcast around the world or in one of our terrestrial radio stations across the country. We couldn't be more grateful for you to be here and tuned in, whether this is your first show or whether you're a regular listener. We so much appreciate your time and dedication to exploring mind and body. Now today, I'm bringing on Dorothy Keith. You heard her a number of different times. She herself and I are going to be talking about inviting a homeless man into our home and basically sharing our home. This man is named Bing Bing Lee and he is spreading equal and unconditional love. And quite honestly, we always wondered what it was like to bring a homeless man in, homeless person, and welcome them into our home, maybe feed them a meal, let them shower, and we did all that. So we thought it would be a pretty cool experience to share that with you. So sit back and enjoy. We got all that coming up on... This is Exploring Mind and Body. Naturally improve your lifestyle one show at a time with your host, Drew Tadia. All right, so here we are, Dorothy Keith and I are right here, ready to rock the mic. Welcome to the show, Dorothy. Thanks, Drew. It's always great to be back on the show. <laughs> no question. So today we're talking about bringing on Bing Bing Lee, or talking about Bing Lee. And that's his name, by the way. His name is Bing Bing Lee, L-I. L-I, not L-E-E. <laughs> so he explained that to us as well. But just real quick, if you don't not quite sure who Dorothy is, Dorothy and I run True Form. Dor- Dorothy plays a big role in our monthly membership. Does meal plans, recipes, grocery shopping lists. Dorothy also offers support as well. So that's a big thing, big part of what we do at True Form. She does some coaching, one-on-one coaching. And she also launched Cooking with Dorothy, which is a Facebook live show that's done every Tuesday evening. So you can definitely tune into that. Or you can check out all past episodes on our YouTube channel. So our YouTube channel is True Form Life. Now, Dorothy and I welcomed Bing Bing Lee. Do you want to call him Bing Lee? Or Let's Bing. call him Bing Lee. Okay. We welcomed Bing Lee into our place. Well, why don't you explain to them how we first met Bing and how it came about for him to be like, hey, I'm going to crash at your place. <laughs> <laughs> well, how about let's just call him Bing because that's what he preferred. Drew called him Bing Bing and he's like, oh, how about just Bing? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go with Bing. So the story all started We were, one, one evening. We just saw Bing randomly on the pier so we're we're visiting redondo beach area and we saw him on the pier and he had this cart with a message on it that said that he was walking across the world and that's what caught our attention but there were so many people around that night we didn't get a chance to talk to him we just kind of glanced over and well we're kind of thinking what's that guy all about (laughs) yeah i kind of wanted to ask him questions but then i was like maybe there's another time or place for this that's right and then it just so happened that about a week later, would you say, Drew? Or yeah, a few days, a week. A few days, like a week later, we saw him again in the same spot. So of course, Drew had to ask him a bunch of questions. I said it was a barrage of questions. That's <laughs> what I do. I'm a questions person. So we bumped into him. I was like, Dorothy, I'm gonna ask this guy some questions. And she's like, Go ahead. <laughs> Go gonna, for it. I'm gonna get comfortable. <laughs> And then so and so we were talking to Bing and then he he answered all these questions for us about being homeless, about him traveling the world. That's what he wanted to do. He started in Vancouver about a year and a half ago. That's right. Well, he started walking November 2016. Okay. Wow, you remember the date? I remember and stuff. <laughs> okay, so November 2016 and he's dry, and he's walking down the West Coast which we actually drove. And and that's what he wants to do. He wants to spread love. He wants to let people know. Sorry, equal. He's very particular about this equal and unconditional love that he was sharing, that he wants to spread. And he thinks that money is kind of evil a bit. Or it's. he said people weren't supposed to or meant to use money because it doesn't bring about good things in the world. And... What else, Dorothy? <laughs> well, he had... He was very, I guess 
serious about his message, right? About He's passionate. Passionate is a better word than serious. Yeah, very passionate. He had some unfortunate things happen to him in his life. He wasn't too much into sharing his past history, but he had some some things happen which inspired this whole journey for him. So he said he woke up one morning in 2015 and just knew that he had to start spreading this message. And at the time, he, he told us he was in Vancouver. So he started spreading his message around that area. And he was living in a tent at a time. At the time, he had a, had his cart with the message on it and spreading, spreading all of spreading his unconditional love and then i'm not sure at what point he woke up and thought "Hmm, i should take this worldwide (laughs) but in like i said earlier in november 2016 he said he started walking and his goal is to walk across the world and you know it's interesting because he is so organized and he knows exactly his plan And he started in Vancouver and like Drew said, he was walking the West Coast and we met him in in LA area and he has it all mapped out. He's going to do so many years in the US walking and then he's going to go down to Mexico and South America. He and I said, well, after and then after that, he said he's going to Europe and I said, to him or asked him, well, how are you going to cross the ocean? Thinking maybe he hadn't thought of that yet, but Oh no, he had it all <laughs> planned out at, at, I think he said Buenos Aires or some, yeah. as, as it was Buenos Aires. Yeah. At Buenos Aires, he was going to get a sailboat, <laughs> right? That I think he it. was going to take a sailboat to Buenos Aires. Oh, well, well he was going to get a sailboat to go right. across the ocean. Yeah. 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 So it, it was quite impressive. It was, you know, because and even when we met him, we were talking and I was asking him a bunch of questions. One of the questions I asked him was, how does he stay so clean? And he said, because he does, he said, some people actually don't believe I'm homeless or they just, they just think that I'm just standing here when I have a home to go to, but he's very clean shaven. His face is shaven and his head is shaved. And I asked him, how do you stay so clean? He said, well, I'm, he said, I wash myself. I try to stay away from things that are too dirty. And he said, I find, he finds place, clean places to sleep. Sometimes churches open up places for him to sleep, or sometimes he sleeps in some kind of tight areas i suppose where that's a bit cleaner he doesn't eat food that's dirty or he say he doesn't pick through the garbage can so and then he washes himself whenever he gets a chance and then he said sometimes people welcome me into their home and when they do i would do my laundry i wash my clothes i I take a shower i shave myself so and while he was explaining this to to drew i was like oh he is so gonna ask if he can stay at our place (laughs) i just knew it (laughs) i didn't even think anything of it he was like where do you guys live we're at the pier and we don't live far from there from here in redondo he said where do you guys live i said well we live a block or two away he said oh really do you think it'd be okay if i stayed at your place yeah as soon as he asked where do you guys live i'm like here it comes <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna ask us and it wasn't you know what the thing was it wasn't very pushy no and it wasn't like invasive it was very like in in conversation i was probably talking to him for about 20 minutes at this point it wasn't a random hey do you want to mind if i stay with you and it was like okay we didn't really think about it like we were having this nice conversation he was well spoken clearly a bright individual and he said can i stay with you guys and dorothy and i kind of looked at each other and we're like sure like what are we going to say someone needs your help or someone asks for your help you don't say no do you no that's right we knew that right away it was the on the spot we said yes it wasn't until later that when we were walking away then we started questioning ourselves and you know are we too trusting did we do the right thing and i looked at her and i said you know I'm almost sad that we're even questioning our decision because of the world we live in. We have to think about these things like safety and so on. But it was this feeling that we got from him. I'm I'm very much a feelings person. <laughs> and he just brought, you know, happiness and a good feeling about 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 him, so talking to him. So I knew that I just knew that it was the right choice or yeah, the right decision. He had good energy and he was like I said he was well spoken and we know there's quite a few homeless people around this area and sometimes we talked to we bought lunch for someone last summer you bought some food for him. 
for Gary. And for, for Gary. And we, so we know some of them. We know that we've seen them. Some of them ha- that have mental illnesses. A lot of them do, actually. Some of them can't have conversations. And some of them, you basically, you, I mean, quite honestly, you wouldn't feel safe with them being in your home. And they probably wouldn't say yes if you invited them anyways. But regardless, Bing was very with it. And he was bright. And he was scheduled. And he was almost, uh, what's it, like OCD? OCD. He probably had a bit of OCD going on because we'll explain his organization here shortly. But that's kind of how we got to our conversation with Bing. And it's, and, and again, it's kind of funny. Dorothy and I talked about with the homeless people around here. We thought, what would it be like to invite someone in, to give them a shower, to give them some type of food? Because it'd be difficult or challenging to have a shower or to have clean clothes. So we've actually had that conversation. And then Bing, of course, he presented himself to us. And we're like, you know, be careful what you ask for, because sooner or later it's going to show up knocking at your door. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so from moving on from the invite, Bing said like a couple of days later, you remember better than I do. And this is fresh on our minds here. But he said, I'll be back in a couple of days at this time. Yeah. So I think it was about a Thursday night around there. And he said, how about Saturday? Well, before he he asked the day, I suppose, he says, well, tomorrow I'm going to be here. And then the next day I'm going to be at this spot. So how about Saturday around 8 (laughs) o'clock? But unfortunately, we we weren't around that night. We were were away. And he says, well, Sunday, will Sunday work? And he said, and we were like, yeah, Sunday's fine. And 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock, he said at night. And uh, that was a little late for us because Drew and I like to go to bed early. So we said, how about a little earlier? How about seven? And he says, yep, yep, seven works. So then the few days following this, I we kept asking each other, do you think Bing's going to show up on Sunday? <laughs> we didn't really think too much about it ex- except for those small conversations. Yeah. And we both kind of thought, you know, he probably found another place or maybe he's not coming back to this area and he's probably going to carry on. And truthfully, I was kind of excited to, to see if he's going to show up. Drew was very excited <laughs> and I, I was looking forward to it as well, but I didn't want to be disappointed if he didn't show up. So, and I wasn't quite sure. I wasn't sure if he would show up. So I kept saying, Drew, just remember, he might not show up. But at 6.45 on Sunday night, there Bing there was. There Bing was. He had his cart and he had his big smile on his face and he was ready to go. So we should maybe talk about what he has in his cart. Yeah, I don't even know what he had on his cart. I, I do want to mention one thing. So we, we have some stairs coming up to our place and he had a cart. Like he pulls this cart around. It's, it, would you call it big? Yeah, it's. I would say to haul it around day after day. Yeah, it's not. I would it, say it's, it's bigger than a backpack. Like it's, it's a pretty big cart. It's a wagon. Know, a wagon. Mm-hmm. So he's pulling this wagon behind him, and then the wagon has writing all around it. And he asked, of course, he had to bring his stuff around back to get into our place. And then he said, I said, oh, I'll help you carry that up. And he's like, oh, I think it's quite heavy. I don't think we can pull it up. Do you have an alley or anything? I said, there's no alley here. There's no access to the back. There's another house back there and someone else. That's someone else's house. So I said, we can just we can just carry I'm used to carrying heavy things. I'm not too worried about it. And he was so worried that I was going to get hurt. And I didn't have any shoes. He said, well, I didn't have any shoes on it because I just came down the stairs. And he says, well, go get some shoes on. Don't hurt yourself. And then he was very, like, very particular. Go get shoes on. You can't get hurt. And I was like, bing, it's okay. So I tried to lift up one side, and it was kind of light. It wasn't that heavy at all. So I was like, come on, bing, let's carry this up right now. Because I didn't want to go back upstairs and come all the way back down. And it wasn't an inconvenience at all. So I kind of talked him into it. We carried it up the few stairs, and then he uh, pulled it into the back, back of the house where it was stayed for the evening. Yeah, and you know, the back door to our place was open, and it was, I'll always remember this moment because Bing just walks in the door, hey, Dorothy, <laughs> like walking up the stairs to, to our place because we're on the top floor, and he just walks up really proudly and just really happy, confidently, confidently and just says, hey, Dorothy, <laughs> how he re- are you? <laughs> he remembered our names right away. Oh, yeah. Like he said, uh, he's, when I was walked in the back door, when I heard him, he says, hey, Drew, I'm here. And I said, Bing, you made it. Thanks for coming. And then I remember him saying your name too. I think it's so important. It's so welcoming and it means a whole lot more. Like he's staying at our home. It could have been like, I stayed at all kinds of people's houses. Hmm. And I don't remember, not going to remember everyone's name, but he came in confident, confident, proud. Like, hey guys, here I am. Yeah. So we thought that was... 
And he definitely had an agenda. Like he knew exactly what he was doing. And we just kind of let him take, I don't know, would you say free range or let him make it himself at home? We, yeah, we just let him make, made him make himself at home. We said, whatever you need, you can help yourself to. And whatever you need to do. And he knew exactly what he was he doing. He knew exactly what he was doing. He says, well, I'm going to put my laundry in. And then I'm going to go shave my head. Because he shaves his head in his, like Drew said, he's very well shaven. And then I'll come back. I'll put my laundry in the dryer. And then I'll take a shower. Then I'll set up my bed for, and go sleep on the floor. Sometimes a show once a week or even twice a week just isn't enough. So if you want more content, if you want to know more about what we're doing at True Form Life, you can find us on Facebook. We're on there posting at least twice a day in the morning and the evening. That's at facebook.com slash trueformlife. We're on Instagram. That's kind of my favorite platform. I like to post my food pictures and some of the activities that I do, maybe hiking or whatever that may be. And that's just at Drew Tadia on Instagram and then Twitter as well. That's at True Form Life. So we're highly active we'd love to connect with you so find us on your social media platform and let us know how you're enjoying our show <laughs> no, he needed he was very particular he needed to he needed to set up his bed first then he was gonna go shower oh. because as soon as he was done the shower then he was gonna go to bed ah and, see i didn't even remember yeah and he's very particular that's exactly what he had to do and that's exactly what he did and it was he was sitting there eating an avocado with us. Oh yes, yeah. And he, he wouldn't have. He didn't want any food. We said we can make you some food. We have. We had a salad. We had some veggie burgers, and what else did we have? Oh, rice, rice, and mushrooms and onions. And that was our that was our dinner. And we said you're more than welcome to have di- have dinner. He said no, you know. And he, he was very particular about not having too much or not taking too much. Like he didn't want to shave his head in the house because the hairs would get over everywhere. And he knows that. And I know that because I have a shaved head as well. And and then so that was very particular. He needed to do that away from the house. And he also said that he wants the, the hairs to go back to nature. Yeah. <laughs> so he actually walked like across the street to this grassy area and shaved his head. And we were sitting on the balcony and he waves up at us. <laughs> He's does. over there shaving his head in the, in the street. <laughs> Yeah. And he looks up and, hey, guys, he waves <laughs> at us. Yeah, he was waving at us. And then he came back and we asked him if he wanted to have food. He said, no, no. And it was kind of funny. One of the dogs in the backyard, it's a neighbor's dog. We share a backyard. And one of the neighbor's dogs took his avocado. Oh, yeah. And then was kind of put it in a in a sand pit. And it looked like he was going to bury it or save it for later. Remember, Ryan, we have a friend that says that her dog buries avocados and, until they're ripe. Until they're ripe and then digs them up and eats, and eats them. them. So maybe that's what Jack was doing. I don't know. <laughs> it's pretty funny. But he wasn't mad. He said, I can't find my avocado. And he's looking around. And then I helped him look. And I was like, it's over there in the sand pit. And he wasn't mad or upset or angry. He just said, well, I guess I should eat that tonight before it goes bad. Yeah. So that's what he had. And he didn't want to take too much. He said, I had lots of food today. I don't need a full meal this evening. So he said, I'm going to sit here and eat this avocado so it doesn't go bad. And we sat there and talked to him while we... And asked him a million more questions. <laughs> That's right. We asked him all about his life and his travels. And we had a nice conversation with him while he ate his avocado. Yeah, I think it, <laughs> it's important to mention, too, he's not accepting any money right. uh, as he goes along. So he doesn't have any money and he doesn't want any money. And he will accept food, but but that's about it, right? Yeah. Food, shelter. Shelter. He'll accept, like, he came and he washed his clothes here. Right. So he'll accept those things and he washed, Shower. he showered here. So I suppose that's a form of taking and giving. And then, yeah, he wouldn't take any money. And even he says when people offer to give him money, he says, no, I'm sorry, I can't take your money. If you would, and they said, well, take the money and go buy your food. He said, no, I'm sorry, I can't do that either. He said, but if you have food or if you take that money yourself and buy me food, I'll accept it. That's right. So it was very interesting, his mind thought of accepting money because you and I talked about it, Dorothy. And we said that, well, he could take that money and spend it on food just like that other individual. Wouldn't be that much of a difference. But for him, it was. It was, it a, was a big difference. Yeah. yeah, it was a big deal. Like he's not taking money and that's what he's he stands behind because he said people have tried to give him hundreds of dollars and he said it happens all the time he said people have cried in front of him that people people have been very emotional and he just said i can't take money and that's he actually i want to tell this story that he went to someone's house 
some a daughter of some sort. So he met a lady or a girl at a coffee shop, and she said and had asked. I'm not sure if he asked if he could come over and and shower or spend the night or if she offered, but he went home with with her and the mom, too, was there. And then the dad comes home (laughs) and the the husband, the dad comes home and he didn't feel comfortable with Bing staying there with them. But he actually bought Bing two nights at a hotel nearby. So they said it was pouring out. Yeah. So he, and he didn't have any shelter at that place. I think he was kind of in the valley, in the middle of nowhere, where there was no real shelter. And he didn't doesn't have an umbrella or anything. He actually walks around without a shirt on. Um, so that so then that's why he accepted the hotel. He said, I didn't really have a choice because I had nowhere else to go at that time. So that's why he accepted that. But we thought it was pretty cool. He said, and then, of course, the hotel is going to be 100 150 bucks a night. So he said, this guy was, he's so grateful for this guy that, didn't exactly feel comfortable at his home but he still paid for him to stay at a hotel Mm -hmm. right so then from there bing slept and i'm pretty sure he was meditating at night we had a separate room for him he kind of we asked him where he wanted to sleep and well he kind of told us where he wanted to sleep (laughs) it's funny because as soon as he walked in our house he started planning like okay there's the laundry room i'm gonna do that and oh okay this is the washroom this is where i'll shower and he says I'm going to sleep there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll sleep over there. I'll sleep over there. <laughs> and we said, sure, you can sleep wherever you want. And then so he set up his bed very particular. He had a, what did he have, a tarp? A tarp on the bottom. And then he had some type of blanket to lay on, right? Or, or it wasn't like, it was a blanket, wasn't it? Like yeah. on the bottom. And then he had pill, like a little blow up kind of pillow thing for, for camping. And then... Uh, a blanket to go over top of him, right? And that was it. Then he said his clothes out. His clothes were all set up nicely. And then he, that's basically, then he took a shower. He's very particular. He wanted to set up his bed. He wanted to take a shower. So he was clean before he slept on our floor. That's right. And that, and we thought that was, you know, little. that was ex- extraordinary. Like people, other people wouldn't think of that, I don't think. And you know what I thought was, or that had touched me was that we told him when we met him down at the pier, we're like, yeah, sure, you can come over, but we don't have a couch or like, you know, we have a small space. Um, and he's like, oh, well, I'll sleep on the floor. That's no problem. And we're like, okay, as long as that's fine with you. And then he gets to our place and he's he was like, Oh, you have carpet. Much nicer than sleeping on the concrete. <laughs> he was excited that we had carpet. So yeah. I was like, wow. <laughs> and then from there, we basically, so he slept, he slept, we slept. We woke up in the morning and he says the bathroom is kind of, was kind of next to where he stayed. And he kind of was a bit groggy and he opened his eyes and I was passing him. And I was be, trying to be quiet so I didn't disturb him. And he kind of opened his eyes and he says, Good morning, Drew. <laughs> I just I thought that was funny. I'll probably never forget that. And he also said good night, guys. Like good night, guys. Did. When yeah. we said when he said good night. So or when right before we were going to bed. That's right. And then we so we got up in the morning and we asked him if he needed anything, if he wanted anything. He said no. I'm going. Know where I'm going. Once I pack up, I'm going to go to Whole Foods. And sp- he wanted to spread the word there. He said sometimes people give him food there as well for the day. So he had a plan. He knew exactly what he was doing. We did a Facebook Live interview. I said, do you want us to help you spread the word on Facebook? And he said, sure. And you can find that. That's at uh, facebook.com slash trueformlife. That's where our live videos go. That's where Dorothy does her live cooking with Dorothy show as well. It's so much fun. (laughs) (laughs) So Dorothy will do that for 30 minutes and does all kinds of different cooking snacks. Right now we're doing a series with Complete Truth Protein actually and baking. So we're doing all kinds of healthy baking recipes in there. Okay, yeah, so you can definitely tune in there as well. But that's where we did that video. And I also did a, I put the camera on Bing as well. And he said, it's okay for now. He said, once I start spreading the word, I don't think he really wanted to be famous or he didn't really want to be on, I don't know. He was talking about all kinds of stuff, but he didn't really want to be on on TV. But he said right now while he's spreading the word, he'd be happy sharing his message to as many people as he can. He said, eventually I'm not going to want to be in front of a camera or in front of anything sharing this message he just thinks that the word will kind of spread on its own and, and carry on and move forward in that in an organic 
way. Yeah, and he was definitely a talker, and yeah. he could um, he spoke very well or speaks very well, I should say, and very confidently and proudly. Yeah, like I said, I think passionate's a good word for him. Like he's very passionate about what he was doing. He wants to spread love, and he said equal and unconditional in unconditional love like for, for all creatures for all creatures so everyone should be treated well we should all pay attention to all humanity everyone should be treated you know with love and care and and i think that that's the main message that he was trying to share and i suppose he was showing that through example like through the way he lived yeah and he had this written on his wagon um, and Drew was taking a picture of, of the wagon, and the word equal was kind of covered up by the <laughs> handle of the wagon. Yeah. And um, he's like, wait, wait, Drew, I got to fix this little handle up. And so he put the handle in a different spot. He says, it was covering up the most important word, equal. So <laughs> he really was stressing equal and unconditional love. Yeah, And he was also very into like the environment he didn't want to take too much he wanted the lights off off he, yeah he, he didn't want to come in and take too much like more than he could handle really like he didn't want extra food he didn't need the lights on he didn't actually want the lights on and i just thought that was very very interesting very cool way to live because dorothy and i we try to live that way as well in a, in a minimalistic manner and, but it's kind of funny that he was in in our lives and dorothy and i very live very simply one phone one vehicle we have small spaces that we live in and i said to dorothy like i said we have so much and this guy has nothing and i said even ourselves we live minim minimally and i feel guilty for all the things that we have yeah i said to bing i said drew and i thought that we live very minimally and then we met you <laughs> <laughs> He said, yeah, you have lots more stuff than I do. Yeah. <laughs> and then to, before we wrap things up here, I just wanted to mention that he said when, when he was leaving, he said, well, he says, I don't want to say thank you. He said, because if I said thank you, that it means that means that you, you're giving too much and too, and saying thank you. And, and there was no reciprocation. That's I think that's what he was trying to explain. And I think we knew we were on the same page and the same level that he shared his experiences, sharing his story, sharing his life and sharing his equal and unconditional love with us. That was it was a fair trade. It was it was us taking from him and he was taking for us and it was equal. And that's what the main I suppose the main message that he wanted to share, not paying for things and not giving things, not even really trading things, I don't think. It was just being equal and unconditional with whatever it is you're doing. Yeah, and then it was kind of emotional because we're standing out front of our place saying, saying goodbye or we got a final picture together and stuff. And then he just like turns away, <laughs> pulls his little wagon in a way he goes down the side and sidewalk. He, and he was gone from our lives. Then he was gone. Just And it could have been, you know, it's kind of crazy. Like it could have been like not even a real person. And he does talk about this in our video, video interview about how like we're all energy and we're all beings and we are all the same. We're all one. So I could, I, I say like he could have like, he could, it could have been just a spirit that walked into our lives, probably changed our lives in some way forever, and then it disappeared. That's right. And that's how he just he just kind of floated away. It wasn't like a big goodbye. It wasn't a big celebration. It was just like as quietly as he walked into our lives, he disappeared from our lives as well. Yeah. All right, guys. I'm going to wrap things up here. I want to thank you, Dorothy, as always, for tuning in and being a part of our show. Oh, yeah. Anytime, Drew. Love coming on. <laughs> All right. And then I want to thank you guys as well for being here, for being a part of our True Form Life community. We certainly wouldn't be here without you. We're super excited to continue to move forward with exploring mind and body on different stations and different platforms. We're also on Spotify now, which is a newer thing for us. I understand you could be listening to this at any point because we like to keep our content evergreen so you can listen to it years later as well but you can find us on all kinds of different platforms again we're also nationally syndicated as well so we're on a number of different terrestrial radio stations as well as a podcast and on itunes as well we also have a free app that you can download on any apple device that's something that we encourage because then you can download the show with you and take it with you wherever you go all past shows are going up on exploringmindandbody.com. So if you ever miss a show, you can also listen to the shows there. And then we also, you, as you heard before on the show, we have Cooking with Dorothy on Facebook Live every Tuesday evenings. That's facebook.com slash trueformlife. So if you liked 
if you'd like to hear more of what she had to say, she can definitely help out in different ways. More details as to what we have going on at trueformlife.com, which is where we put the, put together meal planning, recipes, grocery shopping lists, and more. And if you want to get going in the right direction, we have a free 10-day fitness challenge as well to get you rocking and working out and feeling fantastic. Once again, thank you so much for being here. That's it. That's all I got. I'm out of here. As always, I'm your host, Drew Tadia. You've been listening to Exploring Mind and Body with True Form Life's Drew Tadia, fitness expert. To find out more about the show, Drew Tadia, or to listen to past shows, visit exploringmindandbody.com.